Uh, Dorian Daniel says, how did you guys in singleness handle your sexual drive and not think about intimacy during the early AM between four and seven when our drive is the strongest? Well, this man is a scientist. <laughs> this man is a oh, scientist. Man, I got, I, that made me laugh. I mean, this man, I said, man, he, he, I think he's about right. He, when you wake up, I understand, bro. Um, listen, I'm going to just tell you from my experience, right? First off, sex is a gift from God. You don't want God to take your sexual drive. That's just, that. that's, 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 that's not wise. You don't want that. That's God created sex. God wants us through his spirit, through sanctification to become better stewards of our sexual drive. I right. think what's missing is that there is the world will lie to you and be like, well, you you can't steward that. That's just what men do. No, there is a stewardship that comes from submission. Like when I submit my life to Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to renew me and to sanctify me, giving me a new perspective of my sexual energy and to eliminate all contributing factors that may flood that, that four to seven hour window won't be as intense. See what I'm saying? It won't be as yep. intense because number one, you, you, you allow the sanctification of the Holy Spirit to renew your mind in regards to what, what comes with sexual drives and etc. Secondly, then you will begin to eliminate after you submit, then you subtract. Then you begin to subtract things that are contributing at subtracting shows, uh, getting rid of Instagram, getting rid of apps, getting rid of anything that may even pose a question. Number three, then you allow the Holy Spirit to show you or not show you, but surround you with accountability. Right. Then fourthly, the fourth thing that helped me and I know it helped Jeff and will help you because sexual drives don't stop when you get married. Right. Stewardship must continue. Right. Eliminate all triggers. Right. The last thing is is mess. Uh, what's another S? Number the first S was submit your life to Christ and His sanctification. Number two, what was it? You uh, subtract. Yeah, subtract. Subtract. Surround. Number four. Uh, um, dang, I forgot. It, it boils down to seeking God's purpose for your life. I didn't write seven books just out of nowhere. Okay. I didn't make 1800 videos out of nowhere. Okay. About time those seasons were seasons of product. Uh, it became better for you, boy. Yeah. I was too tired, man. I fell asleep. Idle time leads to an idle mind. Idle mind leads to idle hands. Idle hands leads your hands to do other things. Okay. So those that, that's just what helped me. But but I'm telling you, the intensity of those drives begins to diminish the more that you are more proactive and intentional with your time. Uh, but that's just the drive, say, boy. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Go ahead. Oh no, sorry, finish, please. Nah, I'm done, bro. All right, I was I was just gonna bring out three points. Number one, um, a fire is fantastic in a fireplace. It is a nightmare if it's in the middle of your living room. Oh, say Let me again, say that again. A fire is great in a fireplace. It's terrible. Hold on, Jeff. Hold on, Jeff. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Jeff. This moment has been brought to you by Mrs. Ezzy. She brought me some tea. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, sorry. A fire is great in a fireplace. It's terrible if it's in the middle of your living room floor. Meaning sex is a good thing and it's part of a place. <clears throat> Is yeah. a it will burn your life down if it's outside of its proper where it was meant to function. That's number one. Number two, Matthew 18, 8. See, this is the problem, I think, with a lot of people in America. They have been so desensitized to sin. But listen mm. to what the Bible says. In Matthew chapter 18, verses eight, verse 8, it says, I'm gonna read from the let's see. I can't find any other version. I'm just going to read New King James. If your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life ma lame or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. What do I mean by that? If you being alone from 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. is going to lead to sin, then you don't need to sleep by yourself. What do I mean by that? 
<clears throat> you should get a roommate. You should stay at your parents' house. I don't care if you have to sleep on your parents' bedroom floor at the bottom of the bed. If it will keep you from going into sin and dying and going to hell, then you should. I don't care if you have to sleep in between your parents. <coughs> I don't care what you have to do. If you have to sleep in a cold water bathtub to make sure that you don't sin between four and seven. If you got to get a flip phone instead of a smartphone, it is better to get a flip phone and go to heaven than to have a smartphone and go to hell. It is better because fire is good in a fireplace. But if it's taken out, it will burn your entire house down and leave you with nothing. Number three, what you feed grows. What you don't feed dies. Listen, if you are feeding something, it becomes nourished. When you withhold nutrients, you become malnourished. If you have ever been around something that is malnourished, eventually it does not get the nutrients it needs because it's been denied access, denied access. I'm sleeping in my parents' room. I got a flip phone. I don't look at Instagram. I don't look at Facebook. I stay out of the magazines. I don't watch movies where they're doing crazy stuff. I stay away from that stuff. I mean, I don't even like looking at a kissing scene. I even a, 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 a meaningful kiss or whatever that even even on TV that's like not not nothing. I, I I tell my boys to close their eyes for that. I'm over there closing my eyes too. When I walk by in the mall, get, when we walk by in the mall, we go by Victoria's Secret. Guess where my hands are? Over my son's eyes because it is not normal what they are promoting it's because not. they are promoting it for a fire in the in the bed or in the. They want to put a fire. Yeah, that's what they want to do. They want a fire in your bedroom, not in the fireplace. That's the problem. And it's destroy your life. So I would just say this. Prioritize righteousness and holiness over sin. Now, some practical things like we said. Sleep somewhere else. When we were in college, we used to sleep on each other's floors all the time. All the time. Yeah. And, and they don't know that. We, we yeah. literally. We literally did that all the time because it is better. It is better to be in fellowship with people and not go off into sin. So, so there are practical things that we've given you, but then spiritual things. Listen, you've got to see every woman as a potential sister in Christ. That's right. When you begin to value a woman from God's eyes, when, you know, listen, I said this to our boys the other day, Ezzy. I said, when, when you have a religion, you'll hear an instruction. But when you have an, a relationship, you'll hear instruction and the heart behind it. That's, That's right. the difference. It's not God just telling me something. It's why he's telling me something. He doesn't just share what I'm supposed to do. He gives me his heart behind it. So it's the same thing when I see a woman. Oh, God doesn't just say, don't sleep with women. Don't do this with women. Don't do this with women. He says, that's my daughter and you're my son. And I know that if you do this and this and this, it's going to grieve my heart and it's going to take you out of relationship with me. And I don't want that. That's the difference between religion and relationship. Relationship is concerned about your well-being and that person's well-being. And so when you get off into all this craziness, listen, I fight with everything in you to stay holy. The Bible says it's better to marry and to burn or than to burn, right? If you got to get married tomorrow, okay. I mean, there's 15, I think it's what, two to one men, uh, uh, two women to one men. I'm sure you can find somebody. So, you know, <laughs> unless you're young and I get that. I'm not saying you go off and get married, but I am saying do everything you can to live a life of holiness because that's what the devil wants. I, I don't care what anybody else says. The devil doesn't want what want anything. He doesn't want your he doesn't want your wealth. He doesn't want your quote unquote success. All that nonsense and all that. He doesn't want that. He wants your holiness because he knows that he knows without holiness you're not going to heaven. You're not going to go. So he just attacks you. Sorry, as a kid, yeah, we no, can go no, to no, another no, man. Listen, we'll probably end on this one for time's sake. Yeah, but let me tell you this. Do you understand the psychological warfare, pornography, and sexual stuff is? Yep. He knows a man entangled in that is no threat to him because all it takes is a leg, a thigh, a breast, a wing. It, it, it'll take whatever. Yep. And you automatically off. Like that is a psychological warfare. And what it does, you have to understand, that's what Jeff was saying. Yep. When people hear from God, they think God is just saying, don't do it. Mm -hmm. God has a why behind every don't. And a why behind every do. Right. So when you understand a relationship, to, like Jeff said, if you have a religious connection with God, you know, quote unquote, then all you're going to hear is instruction with no why. 
But when you have a relationship, you would then would be like, okay, Father, I may not understand this, but help me to understand. Yeah. Help me to see that every woman is your daughter and a sister in Christ of mine. Even if she's not in Christ, I'm going to treat her like a sister anyway. Because I know that if I don't nip this in the bud, if I don't surround these things with disciplines and I don't deepen myself in devotion, then I, that would be the number one thing used through me to sabotage everything around me. And it, and it carries into your marriage, by the way. If you don't get a hold yeah. of it now, it will oh, carry into your marriage. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't make it magically go away. It doesn't happen. No. I know, no. So, I know so many, I, you guys would not believe the number of people, I'm talking about Christian people, who had an issue with porn before their marriage. They brought it into their marriage and they got divorced as a result. I cannot tell you the amount of people that I know. And I weep for them and I hate that. And, and God has restored some of them and others he hasn't because they continued in their same way. But I'm telling you let what, me, if you don't deal with it out of support, it's going to take you and follow you right in. Let me tell you why. Jeff is telling you the God-given truth. You want me to tell you why? Because the devil knows a wife has multifacets. Your wife, whatever, 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 dressed up. See, what happens with dating is that you always see that person's best. So what happens is you fall in love with their best, but you're not prepared to love their worst. So what happens is you're so caught up in, well, my wife's cute all the time. What happens when you see her when she's sick? What happens when you see her when she's not dressed? Uh, um, what um, she's 75. What happens when she's 75? Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so what you have to understand is that lust has no boundaries. Love has boundaries. That's right. Love says, I know why I am in love. Yeah. So you gotta understand, making lust is easier than making love. Love takes a sometimes love takes work. Because love is so hard. Because because making love says I, I I I may not want to right now, but I love you right now. Lust is easy. All you gotta do is be in the backseat of a car. Lust can lust can be done anywhere. But it's like this. Uh, okay, Jeff. Sorry, it, it, love is um, doing what's right even when you don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. You're doing what you feel like even when it's not right. You see the difference? Love is doing what's right even when you don't feel like it because it's an action. Lust is doing what you feel like even when it's not right. Wow. There's a difference. Big difference. One, the devil's the author of, and one is God the author. I'll tell you what, Jesus didn't feel like going to the cross, but he went. He went. Because he, because he, because he yeah. loved. Yeah. Listen, what we're trying to tell you is that you ain't, you're not going to be able to make love. You're not going to be able to be love if you're not walking with love. It's going to be very hard for you to walk in love if you're not walking with love. The more you begin to love on God and God's love begins to flow through you and in you, you will begin to see your wife differently. You'll begin, ladies, you'll begin to see your husband differently. And then sexiness, sexiness or sexy is, is let me let me make sure I change it. But um, intimacy thrives. Physical intimacy with your wife or husband thrives when there's intimacy between you and God. We're not talking about same intimacy. What we talk about is when your love with God grows, you want to you want to show that love in that way, because you look because because now it ain't about when she bends over. It's not about what she wears. It's the fact that you have awareness that your wife loves your stinking self. Right. Your wife just did just made you an omelet. All of a sudden, I don't care if she got a bonnet on, no makeup. You want to do what it do, because now you you see love differently. Right. But I'm telling you, if you got lust living loudly in your life, you will never see your wife right. You will never, because what happens is you'll be the devil knows that a wife cannot compete with the women on your job when you got lust in your heart. He knows she can't compete with that. Listen, the the 
Even the women on your job and the women on the billboards and the women in the movies can't compete with the women in the movies and on the billboards and at your job. Because that's not them. Listen, they look like that because they are on a diet. You think they look like that after they're done shooting? No. They don't do that kind of stuff. Come on. Whenever they take the makeup off, that's one thing I used to pray all the time. I said, Lord, at at ORU, we had to do the fun run. And I said, Lord, uh, uh, show me who's pretty and who's not. And sure enough, fun run, all them girls come out so early in the morning, they have no makeup on. And all of a sudden, you don't recognize anybody. (laughs) They don't look anything like they used to. But Joanne, she looked the same. And I was like, oh, thank you, Lord. But what I'm saying is, uh, you know, (laughs) you, 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 you can't compete with those people because they're fake. They're, they're not how they are. It's not true. And so, you know, it, it, it's it's a shame because we're, you, you compare them to all those things. But I'll tell you what, it's getting to a point, and this is the God honest truth. You can't even watch commercials anymore in America. No. I, I won't even let my kids watch commercials. They, they know it immediately. They've been trained since they were young. Close their eyes and their ears. It It's trash. And it's going to take away, and that's what he's after. So, But I know we have a lot more questions, y'all. But, you know, of course, we're married men, and we are family men. And, uh, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and transition. Thank you all so much for trusting us with y'all's questions, man. It's an honor to serve you all that way. Um, but real quickly...